Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve, otherwise known as Pin, and today we're going to take a look at the monstrous, the mighty, the frightening Anvil Lightning F8 Charlie, which is the civilian variant. There are other variants of this particular ship, so military, and then this one. This one doesn't have as much armour as the military variant, but it still packs a hefty punch with eight weapon systems to be found on board and eight size two missiles. This ship is absolutely brilliant. I thoroughly enjoy this ship, but I think the thing that appeals to me the most about the Lightnings, and for many people it's a very sought after ship, is just, it looks incredible in my opinion. Extremely aggressive. There is no nonsense with this ship. Obviously it's a heavy fighter and it packs some serious DPS and with all the winglets and wings dripping off of this thing its handling in atmosphere is actually fairly impressive. So it's been on a lot of people's hit list for a while initially you could only get this ship from completing Squadron 42 or spending a certain amount as a concierge member but due to Star Citizen celebrating their 10th anniversary if you found a golden ticket within the verse as I did you were able to purchase it on the website. So this is the F-8A Lightning and it is a heavy fighter employed by the UEE Navy to support space superiority. It was specifically designed to counter heavy vandal craft such as the Glaive and Scythe. It is more nimble and heavily armed fighter craft than its F-7 predecessor. Trading off a second turret for more fixed weaponry, use of the F-8A is generally restricted to elite UEEN squadrons through the F-8C Lightning civilian variant is beginning to see greater adoption. As of 2953, the F-8 Lightning is currently in service on all RSI Bengal supercarriers. During the 2950 Invictus launch week, a special edition of the ship was seen accompanying the UEE Navy fleet around the Stantum system. It was flown by the 999th Squadron and featured a red colour and Navy Squadron logos. Several Lightnings together with the FS F7A Hornet Mark II accompanied a Javelin and two Idris M's. Okay, so CIG did actually release a Q&A for this ship and we will cover that now. What are the differences between the military-only F-8A Lightning and its civilian twin, the F-8C Lightning? The F-8C is less armoured and drops a hardpoint size for all of its weapons across the chassis, however it still packs a hefty punch. As a focused heavy fighter, what would be a typical combat scenario where the F-8C would unleash its full potential? The F-8C brings so much firepower and shielding that it remains effective in most combat scenarios against any small, medium target. Can the pilot access the turret remotely to achieve a 360 degree firing angle or can it be automated with AI blades in the future? No, the turret is more of a dual weapon gimbal mount slave to the pilot rather than a full remote turret. Is the F-8C's weapon loadout fixed or can all weapons also be connected to a gimbal puck forward stroke turret? The F-8C comes with both fixed and gimbaled weapons by default and supports the normal range of customization. The upper and nose guns are gimbaled by default, with the lower ones having a bespoke gimbal mount that doesn't have a one size modifier applied. This allows one fire group to be gimbaled and the other fire group consisting of the four wing weapon hardpoints to be fixed by default. Given the lore background of the F-8C being the latest UEE Navy fighter to support space superiority, does it come with higher quality military spec components by default? Like other ex-military stock, the naval spec components are restricted from civilian users so that the F-8C comes with standard quality components. How well does it handle in standard atmosphere? Is it primarily intended for space combat by the Navy? It handles well for a heavy fighter in both environments. While designed for space combat, the shape lends itself into a good aero surface setup for atmospheric flight. Is it gold standard or can we expect further iterations and updates in the future? Is its current balancing final? It's, it is not gold standard, this release is primarily delivering the existing asset with some quality of life fixes that enables pilots to officially take to the skies instead of relying on stealing NPC ships with bugs. 
and we expect to make further changes in the following patches after release to ensure our vision matches the results. Once Squadron 42 releases, there will be a further revision to the asset to bring the full gold standard setup to the PU. How does the FHC Lightning Executive Edition differ from the standard FHC? The Executive Edition comes with a different black and gold paint scheme that carries over to the interior with a custom dashboard and seat. Does it come with any sort of storage capability for a parcel box or personal weapons and armor? The FHC is a fighter so does not have space for boxes. In the future, it will be updated with personal weapon storage and physicalized inventory location. Does it come with an ejector seat? Yes. Does it already have access to latest ship combat gameplay features like master modes in Arena's Commander's Experimental Mode? The FHC is available in AC for owners but has not been converted for master modes. How many versions of the FHC are there and are they all available through the ongoing birthday event? There are several versions of the FHC and not all of them are available to be earned purchased through the event. Some versions elements are exclusive to various concierge tier rewards. The, best, the base FHC Lightning including the newly introduced Shockwave paint is exclusive to the Wing Commander concierge level. The FHC Lightning Executive Edition is exclusive to the Praetorian concierge level. During the limited time birthday event, pilots have the chance to pick up a base FHC Lightning with the Gold license or a base FHC Lightning with the Stormfire paint, the Platinum license. These are limited quantities, quantities and require participation in the in-game event. Which size of landing pad does it use? The FHC uses a small landing pad the same as the Vanguard and Reliant. Didn't you say the FHC Lightning will only be available after Squadron 42's release? As we have quite a lot of special content that will drop after Squadron 42's releases, we felt it was a shame to keep one of the coolest UEE fighters sitting on a shelf, especially as players have been hijacking the AI and flown in the game and we don't think that they should have all the fun do we still get the opportunity to earn an FHC lightning in squadron 42 those who play squadron 42 may earn a number of bonuses that carry over into star citizen including access to the FHC lightning okay guys so that was the q and I know it was a bit long but I thought it was important to get those messages in cross in case you haven't seen them um, so there is some golden nuggets of information there okay so let's now go over the specifications of this particular lightning so the role is a heavy fighter crew of one combat speed of 212 meters per second it has two size two shields weaponry knows it has two size two repeaters and on the wings you will find two size three ballistic cannons accompanied by two size two ballistic cannons missiles two size four quad racks with four size two ignite missiles turret one size two remote gimbal and that has two size two repeaters now in my limited time in this ship i have been having a lot of fun and i actually think the cockpit is one of the better design cockpits of some of the fighters we have in game although the digital displays for the mfds are cool i actually prefer hard mounts for the displays it just suits the sort of immersive fighter role i feel as for its looks, it just reminds me very much of a Sabre, and I love the Sabre. Um, it, it's a Sabre on steroids with the extra wings and aggressive angles. Um, it's a very impressive ship to look at. So let's now take a closer look at the weapons that we'll find on the F-8. Eight weapon systems plus eight missiles. So we have these turret mounted weapon systems on the back. Um, these are size two badges. Uh, these are gimbaled, which is nice, pilot controlled of course, and they put out plenty of DPS. The ship in general, you don't really need to upgrade weapons at all, it's it's so venomous this ship. And of course we have two more badges located just underneath the cockpit, left or right, under like those, I want to call them the cells, but they're not the cells, um, we'll just call them wings. Um, so. Those four weapon systems are all gimbaled. Then that brings us to the fixed weaponry, which are the Tarantula's Ballistic Cannons. Uh, we have one size two, 
and then a size 3 and that is mirrored symmetrically on the other side of the ship so that's given us a total of eight weapons plus the missiles so not many things are gonna survive the conflict with the lightning um, unfortunately I couldn't find anyone to kill in a PvP environment I'm not the best combat pilot at all I'm terrible in fact but I still wanted to try and put this DPS to work and I was trying to hunt a bounty until we get bounty hunting 2.0 it's pointless you can never track them you finally catch up to them and they log out so until we get bounty hunting 2.0 we won't really or another jump town I won't really be able to see what this ship is capable of against an actual human because we know the AR are a little bit silly engine wise it's got plenty of them and they look really cool again blue flame nothing really to um, turn your nose up at and of course the reverse thrusters here at the front just underneath the missiles and sort of on the leading edge flaps not flaps leading edge of the wings um, the acceleration is pretty good on this ship it's enough to cause you to have uh, blackout problems which is nice uh, here's the missiles and you can see pretty self-explanatory what they do although they are ignites I might change them I'm not a fan of the ignite missiles but still we still get eight um, firing from two separate launchers and of course we'll go for the bit more of an external so DPS wise this thing is relentless and it only makes me wonder how OP must the military variant be with its bigger weapon systems and heavier armor it must be able to be like top dog and the vandals should be worried on the rear of the ship underneath you will find the chaff and noise flare and noise sorry your countermeasures that you'll use to deter anyone trying to shoot you out the sky with missiles and or torpedoes they actually have a really cool effect um, although the flares do predominantly seem to fire at the left countermeasure dispenser which is interesting okay next we will take a look at the landing and flight mode and landing mode and see what the animations are so we have these giant wings next to the cockpit or nacelles I'm not sure how to reference those but and then they retract along with the wingtips and then you get the three landing gear now I've noticed on occasion once you land that f knows the front landing gear sorry it's a tricycle landing gear system the front one sometimes dips into the ground and you sort of land like a aggressive constellation and we've all been there with the Connie when you try to land that a little bit too hard the nose tips over so that is something I have noticed um, it's not really an issue it's just a little bit annoying you know it doesn't sit correctly on the ground the cockpit itself though I think the MFDs are absolutely fantastic I like the hard hard mounts rather than a digital display and the cockpit itself is just a very nice place to sit it's very tight very immersive you feel like you're in a bit of a beast um, the way it sort of wraps around you but I do prefer the standard hard mounting MFDs for easy reach and readable um, displays so it's a very very impressive ship if you think about it, it screams aggression and so it should with all of its weapon systems but what we'll do now guys is take our walk around for a sense of scale so here we are now as previously mentioned I did have to land this ship twice to get the front landing gear to sit correctly on the ground so I'm not quite sure what's going on there but I'm sure that will get fixed when it gets his gold pass so this thing is look at it everywhere you look there's some sort of aggressive angle um, very tight aggressive angles it's just an absolute beast of a ship um, we have the two weapon systems on the wings here which I th believe are the tarantula ballistic cannons of varying sizes then we have the wingtips which fold in themselves um, during the landing and takeoff animations there's some lights and four tails at the back of this ship or stabilizers or whatever they might be rudders maybe um, but it has four of them uh, because more is better obviously moving around towards the rear of the ship we begin, begin to see how many engines well thrusters this ship has and it has ample uh, the acceleration is very good um, even in atmosphere for a heavy fighter this thing is pretty impressive I was more impressed with the handling in atmosphere 
it, I would say it's a little bit better than the Vanguard series of ships, and they're pretty good. Uh, I feel it's a close call, but I feel that the Lightning has the edge. It's probably due to all of the wings hanging off of this thing. Um, so plenty of thrusters, plenty of stabilizers. Everywhere you look, there's some sort of wing flap or something just aggressive hanging off of this ship. It's just awesome. It's an anvil ship, of course, but I don't feel that the paint scheme um, is doing it any favours, which is probably why there are more exclusive variants of this ship. Um, it's not a terrible paint scheme by any means. I just don't think it quite suits the way the ship looks, but nonetheless, it's not really a massive complaint. Um, it is incredible to look at, you know. Even, let's pretend it didn't have eight weapon systems, you would still enjoy having a lightning in your hangar, I feel like. But, but just simply because of the way it lo looks, it's um, very impressive. And then we make our way round to the front end, where we have the badgers just hanging, drooping down there either side of the cockpit. And the struts aren't too bad in the cockpit either, so it's um, a very impressive ship. It's got lots of gadgets and sort of vents hanging off of this, which I'm not sure they what they do. Obviously there's some extra thrusters there for manoeuvring, but very cool. Okay, so we'll hop into the cockpit now. One button. And in we get. Canopy drops down, and we're in. So, as you can see, first impressions. Visibility is fairly good cockpit wraps around you it's a hotas system so hands-on throttle and stick control panel on our left control panel on our right not many buttons are functionable in this particular ship at the moment compared to some of the others we have in the verse struts in and around us although can be a little bit intrusive you really don't notice it all that much it's not a massive hindrance to be quite honest with you but the mfds look great we've been over that um the joystick itself, very reminiscent of an A10 Warthog, um, so that's always cool. We have, like I said, some buttons that seem to be working, um, and some not so much, so quite limited compared to other ships. I did notice that not all of them have a function, although they have said in the future all of these buttons should have a function. Ejection, just in case things go really, really badly, we can uh, escape our ship and float around in space waiting for rescue, so very cool. Um, yeah, so a lackluster amount of buttons compared to the other ships we have in the verse. As you can see, the visibility itself isn't that atrocious. Um, in the landing mode though, obviously the wings are back, so once you're in flight, those are gonna animate forwards and obstruct your view a little bit to the left and right, but again, nothing too serious. All right, so what we need to do now, guys, is of course, look at this ship's stock components. If you find a gold ticket or manage to get your hands on one of these wonderful ships, we can uh, take a look at the stock components. Okay, so here we are with the components of the FHC Lightning, and we'll start with the coolers. As you can see, they're size one, grade two, military, and they are the Polars. We get two of those. Um, as stock which you know I will be upgrading this ship for sure the power plant is the maelstrom which is a size 2 grade 3 military class power plant I almost certainly gonna swap everything to maximize the potential of this ship but from my experience the stock components aren't terrible for the majority of them quantum drive expedition which is size 1 grade 3 um, manufactured by Tarsus so it's fairly good I mean the ship's range is incredible it's absolutely incredible this ship has fantastic range and for the shields we get two size 2 grade 2 stealth shields they will need to be swapped out um, to what yet I don't know but I am definitely going to swap these shields out I don't really want a stealth this thing's a brute I don't see the point in having stealth shields on it at all. Weaponry, so we have our missiles and we have on the wings, we have the Tarantula GT870 Mark II cannon, um, which is a ballistic cannon. 
So these are the weapons found on the wings, the fixed hard points on the wings. Well, these aren't bad cannons, to, to be fair. I just don't like the idea of reloading, and the fire rate is pretty... Although not terrible, I'm not keen on the fire rate. And then we have a size 3 variant of that, um, right next to the size 2. So, pretty formidable <laughs> stock loadout for a civilian fighting ship. Um, then we have numerous badges. Uh, so we have the two badges on the turret. Um, I'm kind of glad that gets slaved to the pilot, as opposed to having another pilot, co-pilot in the back who just moves that turret, kind of like the Super Hornet. I think it's better just to have the pilot have control and save the space. And then, of course, we have two extra badges underneath the ship. So, I went away came back and upgraded the components and I'm going to make this a fun build for this ship um, so let me show you what I decided to do I tried to use components I don't use all that often or in fact have never used and for this build I'm going to use two of the ultra flows for my coolers these are size 2 grade 1 these are industrial coolers um, I thought I'd give those a try um, the power plant is a Genoa um, and then for the quantum drive, I went with the beacon. It's faster. The ship has excellent range anyway. I think it's got large fuel tanks or very big fuel tanks for its size. I'm not entirely sure. Um, then we went with the Lorica shields. Never used these before. Have the same sort of stats as the FR-77s, um, but they're both industrial. And then for fun, and I mean fun, we're going for an all distortion repeater loadout except for two size three panthers and i wanted to see just how brutal this ship would be for disabling nearly everything um how effective it could be to quickly take down shields and then just use the size three um panthers to just obliterate what was left um so it's going to be an interesting time i think um, with these distortions, but I had to try it. I like distortion gameplay. It's fun So let's jump in and see what happened. Okay guys here. We are all upgraded all distortion repeaters bar two repeaters via the Panthers um, laser repeaters to see what's gonna happen here, so We have a mantis which is instant and then Don't know why I got rammed, but we'll, we'll gloss over that. Let's see what happens with the uh, mantis here so Six distortion repeaters, all of them size two, and then we have the fixed size three Panthers. And his shields are toast, which is to be expected. It's not exactly the largest spacecraft, but there's something incredibly fun. And I don't know what it is. I absolutely love just watching these ships shut down and plummet groundwards and then bounce off the deck and there's nothing they can do. It's a sense of overwhelming power, and obviously with six distortion repeaters, you're gonna have a good time, so he's toast. Next up, we're in space, and we have a Shrike, Talon Shrike in front of us here. He's trying to do spicy maneuvers. His shields are gone already, as you would expect. Again, smaller craft, and he, yeah, he's, his signature has gone down. His EM signature, yeah, he's toast. He's just give up, mate. Yeah, just give up. Now we have a bit more of a uh, worthy opponent with the Vanguard here. So let's see how long it takes to disable this guy. Ducking and weaving. Turret gun is very accurate. I'll give him that. His shields are gone already. So now it's a case of just uh, finishing the job, I guess can't go wrong with distortions like I said I'm just um, a little bit regretful that I couldn't try it on a player I really lost patience trying to chase a player across the verse the verse you know where it goes last scene 15 minutes ago you just sort of hanging around um, couldn't be bothered at the end of the day I wasn't gonna sit there all night trying to do it so I gave up but that Vanguard got quickly quickly destroyed 
Although it's probably faster just to kill with all the weapons. I know a lot of people are just going to go straight for Gatling guns and chuck Gatlings on this thing and it's going to be an absolute, absolute animal. But I wanted to have fun with the distortions, sort of play with my food a little bit. We have another Vanguard here, the Sentinel variant. His shields are gone already. He's going to hit the ground. Nope, he's not even going to get that far because we destroyed him. And then we'll see what else is on the menu right now. So... The target is actually a 400i, so that's pretty interesting because the 400i is a superb ship, but not really a combat ship, but it has some of the best shields for a stock ship, you know, it's an absolute tank. I'm going to leave him because he's just not going to stand a chance to see how long it takes to take him. We have a Valiant here we need to deal with. We have all these distortions, you can keep them, yeah you're dead. Um, wow. That was really quick and we've only got two bad uh, Panthers. Distortions for the win. Yeah, um, I just wanted to have fun, you know, with the distortions. And let's see how well they work. We'll kill that uh, Vanguard, we'll finish him off. Now let's find this 400i. Okay, so let's see how effective they are against the mighty 400i with this excellent shield. Um, very good shields. You get those stock with the 400i. I love that ship. So let's see what happens. I mean, you'll notice I haven't done any sub-component targeting or anything. Don't really need to with all this firepower we have on board the FHC. So your shields are putting up a fairly good fight, although they are weathering quite quickly. And I am switching from weapon group to weapon group to maximize my fire rate. The shields and components we've installed seem to be helping, which is nice. That's why I spent all that money. Yeah, there we go. He's starting to feel it now. Oh dear. Your super yacht is going to hit the ground, buddy. Nope, he's still hanging on. He's still hanging on. Now, like I said, I'm pretty sure if you were to equip this ship with just all Gatlings, everything would die immediately. But where's the fun in that? Let's have some fun. Yeah, now all of his shields are gone. So now we're just hitting all of the components. And yeah, he's about to dock his boat on the ground. And now it's just a case of uh, finishing off my meal, I guess. But yeah, I think I might actually stick with this loadout for a while. If you want to kill things quickly, you're going to slap all the Gatlings in the world on this ship. But if you want to have a good time, distortions are, are fun. Like I said, unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to PvP in this loadout. I will keep using it, and maybe I'll catch a bounty. If I do, I will upload it to see you, uh, so you can see if it works or not. The FHC Lightning with eight weapon systems, six distortion repeaters and two trusty panthers equals fun hashtag good times. Um, there we go. We finally got it. I mean, it wasn't really a fair fight. It's not exactly the most maneuverable ship in atmosphere, but still not my fault. So there we go, guys. That was my video on the FHC Lightning. It's a superb ship i'm thoroughly enjoying it i hope you get one i hope you find your ticket or kill a dev so thank you very much for watching guys if you enjoyed today's video you know what buttons to press and i of course will have more star citizen content en route to your location soon thanks for watching guys take care cheers